Have you ever thought, there's got to be a better and simple way to learn organizational strategies? 5 Minutes Learning has a global and diverse collection of case studies to help management students. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our upcoming and interesting case studies. What makes some businesses succeed while others fail within a matter of years? In what way do decisions lead to failure or success for a company? It is important for new entrepreneurs to understand these questions, since it is obvious which side of the equation they want to be on. Some business case studies, like Kmart v. Walmart, helps us to gain a deeper understanding of corporate life and how it operates. This case describes the history of Walmart and asks what competitive strategies Kmart might adopt in response to Walmart's success. It discusses the strategy and organization of both companies in terms of HR practices, store location, distribution, information technology, procurement, pricing, and company culture. Retail giants like Target, Walmart, Woolco, and Kmart all began their operation in the year 1962. In contrast with Walmart, Kmart started from an existing retail establishment, so it benefited from corporate backing and experience. Given this competitive advantage, one would expect to find that Kmart has excelled. Rather, Kmart stockholders experienced decades of miserable results, that ultimately resulted in company's bankruptcy in 2002. Despite being envied by competitors, Kmart filed for bankruptcy twice, once in 2002 and again in 2018, after being acquired by Sears Holdings. Kmart lost over two-thirds of its stores in the short span of 10 years, and it is quite likely that the younger generation may not even recognize a Kmart. So, what went wrong? Let's see some of the factors that led to the failure of Kmart. The first factor would be target market. While Walmart focused on rural America, Kmart focused exclusively on the suburbs and refused to branch out. Walmart's strategy is to concentrate on areas where its competitors don't exist, such as small towns. Walmart created well-organized supply chains and quickly attracted rural customers with its EDLP prices. This technique worked, and Walmart quickly overtook Kmart in sales. In fact, Walmart actually had fewer stores than Kmart when it overtook them. Thus, the pumping out stores method that Kmart utilized may not be the best idea. The next factor is positioning. Positioning has been one of Kmart's major problems. The company lost focus when it ventured into specialty retailing. It attempted everyday low pricing, but that failed. Kmart started out offering discounted national brands but shifted to its own brands in the 1970s. Then, in the 1980s and 1990s, Kmart partnered with some well-known people and companies, and it did not do any better. It had no stability or consistency. It couldn't find its niche. Trying to be successful at everything, Kmart was running around like a headless chicken. Walmart, on the other hand, excelled in specific areas to create unique value for its customers. Walmart, for example, focuses on having low prices for everything, and that is what you remember Walmart for. They avoid larger and more expensive items such as furniture. There is no reason for you to remember a Kmart in your time of need because they have never been able to work on their way to play. Unlike Walmart's everyday low prices, Kmart relied heavily on weekly mailers and used promotional pricing. The problem with print promotion is that it is not as cost-effective as Walmart's slogan, which does not require such large purchases of weekly advertising. Kmart does not have a low price position in consumers' minds. Kmart shifted strategies once more in 2001 adopting a new strategy of less advertising and lower daily prices to compete head-to-head -head with Walmart. Walmart responded to the Kmart challenge by lowering its prices even further. These newer initiatives further weakened the financial position of Kmart Corporation. The strategy was such a failure that Kmart lost a whopping $2.4 billion in fiscal 2001.
Walmart treats products as commodities and can afford to sell them at low prices and still make healthy margins because of its efficient distribution system. Its distribution and inventory management are built on technology that Kmart was late to adopt. One of the most critical factors was how Sam Walton utilized information technology to track what was sold in his stores, replenish the products that sold the fastest, and keep inventory costs low. Furthermore, Walmart's systems are used in a consistent and coherent manner to support everyday low prices and customer service, while Kmart's lurch from one strategy to another. Due to its lack of dominance in many of its markets, Kmart was unable to effectively develop its own distribution system. There were many shelves in its stores that were empty or stocked with unsold merchandise. Across all of its retail formats, Walmart is one of the most effective users of technology. Some of the impressive technological achievements include 1. In the 1980s, using satellite communications to link stores to headquarters for just-in-time inventory management. 2. Early in the 1990s, they developed Retail Link, which provides vendors with sales data by item, store, and day. This information saves suppliers time and expense in planning their production and distribution, which translates to lower merchandise costs. 3. In the mid-1990s, utilizing an item locator system that allowed associates to scan an item and electronically check on its availability in other area stores. 4. During the late 1990s, the new Retail Link private hub was created, which allows more than 10,000 Walmart suppliers to access databases and find out which stores sell what. Walmart uses the web to provide real-time data both to stores and corporate management, as well as to its vendors. The transaction to analysis time is only six hours. In an effort to deal with long checkout lines, Kmart installed self-serve checkers. This move was both a blessing and a curse. It was a requirement that checkers mean fewer need to hire clerks. With this move, Kmart was the first mass merchant to employ self-checkout units on such a massive scale. The problem was the fact that after installing the self-check registers, Kmart had fewer clerks to serve customers. Customers complained about long lines and poor customer service. Despite the large inventory, lack of staffing led to empty shelves. When Kmart filed for bankruptcy in 2002, Eddie Lampert thought it was worth saving and was able to get Kmart out of debt by 2003. Lampert then merged Sears and Kmart to catch up to Walmart, but it did not go over well with either customer base. The combination of Sears home goods and Kmart's household items did not work well together, and the overall decline in Kmart's reputation reached a new low. This eventually led to Sears Holdings filing for bankruptcy in 2018, which means that Kmart, a company that was once one of the most profitable companies in the world, had filed for debt twice in 16 years. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Do not forget to subscribe this YouTube channel for receiving updates about my upcoming case study videos.